So. Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for April the 29th, 2022. This is episode number 108. On today's show, we'll be talking about driving the Toyota BZ4X, attending the fully live, fully charged live event, and the launch of the Ford F-150 Lightning. I'm Dominic Yoni, Inside EV's forum moderator and Inside EV's editor. Joining us today is the meandering Mr. Martin Lee from the recently <laughs> revamped EV News Daily podcast, which is available on all the best podcast platforms. And of course, uh, Kyle Connor joins us from the majestic, practically palatial halls of Edospec Studios, or from where they're producing hot, always fresh videos for a growing number of YouTube channels. And we're very pleased to be joined this week by Lacey of uh, Miss, the Misco Electric YouTube channel. So Tom Malagny can't be with us this week. He is on his way back from driving the Lexus RZ450e in Spain. And But he says hello. And uh, let's see, he shared this photo. Um, so just to let, to let you all know, that he's not slacking off or anything. He's actually over there doing his thing. And uh, yeah, we'll hope we'll have, hear about this all next week. So uh, before we get going, I'd like to ask that you please subscribe to the channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button and ring that bell icon for notifications. If you're watching us on Twitch, you can also ring that bell icon for notifications. All right. So with that out of the way, welcome everybody. Um, so we'll talk about what we've been driving this week in a bit. But first, I want Martin to talk about the fully charged live event in Farnborough he's attending right now. Um, his connection is kind of iffy sometimes, so we'll we'll do this as like as long as we can. And he, he's standing in front. We'll let him tell us in a second here. But so so for those of us for those who don't know, fully charged is a YouTube channel that covers electric vehicles, vehicles and associated technology. Started and managed by Robert Llewellyn, who uh, is an actor. He was in the sci-fi comedy Red Dwarf in in Britain, and later the Scrap Heap Challenge. So Robert has been talking about electric cars and making videos for just about 12 years now. So it, it's a long, well-established channel. And now they're doing these live events. Uh, we're having, we have one coming up in the U.S. this year. It's going to be in San Diego in September. So Martin, uh, want to tell us what's happening there right now and what kind of vehicles are showing off? Sure thing. And if the signal goes again because we're at an airfield surrounded by private jets, which is fine uh then it's a bit of a crazy signal so i can kind of hear every third word that you say when the signal goes just let me know and i can dive off and you can do the podcast as normal uh but i'll swing you around because you know most importantly uh we just need to keep kyle happy because if he doesn't get his fix of citroen ami um uh 100 electric with the roof bars on this uh, i know that kyle gets withdrawal symptoms before i can buy one and ship them uh, ship one to the us to keep him happy uh then uh, but look at this this crazy paint job they've done on 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 this one but uh, you never know whether you're looking at the front or the back because let's face it it's exactly the same uh but uh, uh but yeah it's exactly uh, otherwise exactly how you've seen it you've seen it before but on display on the citroen stand uh but uh but yeah, very, very, very cool. Um, Martin, that's the full Colorado spec with the roof bars, <laughs> the good wheels. Yeah, rusty. I really want to get the chunky one, you know, the off-road one with the that they debuted yeah. with the no doors. It's an amazing thoroughbred, true racing machine. You need to be qualified to handle this level of power. So, you know, just you know, be sure if you ever do drive one. It's you know be really tame with it because it can bite you. Oh, it has a glass roof. I never realized yeah. that before. Glass roof. Yeah. You can see it's got the best viewpoint of everything in the world. It's got the shifter down low for better weight distribution. It's perfect. <laughs> it's got uh, it's got a handbrake. It's got two pedals, and uh, and look, it's got some some sort of heater. I mean, apart from that, USB. Not too much. Yeah, cut out seats because you know weight saving and all that so no, right uh, i mean look it's just it's a beast oh and self-closing doors by the look of it, <laughs> <laughs> it just, just shut itself um uh so yeah that's that's here i'll try and move around with my terrible terrible signal um there's Vauxhall citroen um vw are 
over here. This isn't the VW stand, by the way, in case you think it looks a bit small for an OEM. Uh, this is the VW test drive area. So you can come over here to their kind of secondary area, um, book a time, and you can take out ID4, GTX, ID3, ID5. They've got all their cars lined up over here. Take one out, try one, because as, as we all know, the best way to understand an EV is to drive one. And so they've got, but all, all the, the OEMs are here with all their cars lined up. So you just take them out, go and have a little play um, and see what electric is all about. And look at this. You've never seen this before at a car show. This is the lesser spotted Tesla, not a fan group, not an owner's club. This is, they exist, guys. Right. Look, they've, hi wow. they've hired themselves, they've hired themselves, a, by the look of it, some sort of burger van. Um, and they actually exist. The, te the Tesla have turned up to a thing um, with a rainbow wrapped Model 3 and a, and a right hand drive Model Y, which is cool. So it's nice when they turn up and do stuff because, yeah. you know, everyone else does. So. Uh, I've never ever, and I, and I joke, I know I, I, I joke and jest and, and poke and prod fun at them, but they just don't do anything that's part of the community. They do, they, 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 they walk their own course. And so it's very strange to see um, the Tesla, although I don't know if anyone from Tesla America watches this. I'm sure Elon Musk doesn't. It doesn't look very showbiz compared to everyone else's. Uh, and they're kind of stuck out in the car park. Uh, the MG test drive center, the Kia test drives. Um, and as you go off into the distance, which I think is when I go over there, the signal goes a lot worse, uh, is all the kind of main stands um, of everyone. I can't think of anyone that's not here. Uh, Renault, Renault are not here because I don't know why. Um, but everybody else is here. Kia have their EV6 on show, MG. And this is a, uh, a used group um, or used cars. And so they've, they've turned up to promote, you know, their, their dealer chain. Um, but yes, we have the EV6 and the new Nero EV, not e Nero anymore. They're very insistent on that. They tell me Nero right. EV, that's nice. how it should be called. Um, uh, Polestar uh, are here doing just very scandy things because look, it's just, isn't it lovely? Everything Polestar does just looks lovely. Um, that's nice. So the Polestar 2 is here, and then all the Polestar 2s are over there. So you can take one out and go and have a play in the distance. Uh, a load of Arias are over here from Nissan. So you can't buy one yet, but you can test drive one, which is interesting. Uh, we have uh, just some more uh, cars over here to... Uh, to get in and to and to discover and then another big test drive area over here so you can see uh, the nissan tent uh, you've got ford's got a lot of mustang mac e's here hyundai here with the a ton of arnic fives <laughs> roped all the dealers and i think they've got a load of them here um and uh, and then uh, some german sausage because everybody loves german sausage so i think if i walk further over there it's where the signal will go so i'll i'll walk and talk and uh if it does, uh, just bin me off and, and I'll see you guys next. Uh, oh, it's next already week. going, Mark. So, yeah, there's the Polestar 2 on, on display. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. We, we, can hear, we can still hear a little bit. So how, how many oh, cars do you think they have over there? Is like dozens and dozens? Yeah, I can't I can't think of any that are not here, to be honest with you, at this, this huge site. So Renault are not here. And, and actually some of the other... The Volkswagen Group cars. I've not found a Cupra Born yet. Uh, see the VW over there, uh, but I've not found. There's Skoda's. Skoda are here, and they're doing okay. all the test drives, and there's some Eniacs, uh, but I've not found like the main Skoda stand. So yeah, there's, there's a few, a few things um, over there. Again, I think my signal will go. But in in the distance, we've got uh, some some companies doing funky things with charging, like that shipping container there. Uh, literally, is a shipping container uh, with six fast chargers on the side of it uh, and it's just stacked full of batteries and they can literally pick it up put it on the back of a standard lorry that takes shipping containers um, and take it anywhere so be, uh, they're, they're catering to things like sporting events and even events like this where you go somewhere that you want to, a, a ton of power uh, and it can connect into a, a, a mains connection uh, onto the grid so it can sort of charge and discharge at the same time so that's all very interesting and then inside this is Farnborough airport there's a whole another section indoors uh, which is chargers 
it is uh, all the energy companies, the electricity companies are here, solar. I mean, there's just a ton of charger stands in there, for instance. And so um, it's really interesting. I've been coming to these events. This is probably the fourth year. This is double. This is double on last year. And last year would have been doubled on the year before. I think this is the fourth fully charged that I've done. It just gets bigger and bigger. It's a festival atmosphere now. And, and I'm really interested with these kind of events because I wonder how many people here are sold. They're sold on the mission. Like they love electric cars and, and they're coming here to reinforce uh, their decisions and, and just to go and hang out with like-minded people. And how many people are generally curious or even skeptics? Because that's, that's going to be the, the story of this decade. It's going to be people who don't want to go electric who we need to talk to and tell that story to about why it's not the devil, you know, and actually electric is okay. They've got a lot of classic car stuff here as well, from companies that take out the engine uh, of, of whatever and put in some, there's some BMWs, there's a DeLorean, there's a great um, a beach buggy, uh, loads of classic car stuff here. Uh, and then a whole a commercial section over in the distance as well. I'm not sure you can see any of that if I, if I turn you around. That's where my signal definitely does go over there. Um, but a whole truck section. So, um, you know, commercial vehicles, Volta trucks and things like that arrive aren't here. But many of those truck companies uh, are, are, are here talking to their customers. And then over the other side in the distance, they've got a whole two wheeled section. So they've got a, uh, an outdoor and an indoor test track. So if you want to take out an e-bike, a scooter, e-trikes, uh, what are the, the mono wheel things? What are they called? The, the the balance things that I always fall off of. Um, oh, one wheel. Uh, just a ton of stuff. The, the, yeah. So the key the key to these events is to get people experiencing electric power of whatever it is, whether it's e-mobility, whether it's your favourite car, your favourite brand, or you want to find out about used cars like like these guys uh, sell. Uh, so it does come to six locations next year. I think, as you say, San Diego in the US. I think it comes to Vancouver next year. Uh, and uh, locations across Europe as well. It's, it's amazing what started as a YouTube channel 10 years ago has grown into this huge advocacy opportunity to tell the story of, of, of electric cars. Well, that's, thank you for, very much for sharing that with us this morning, Martin. Appreciate it. So I don't know if you want to hang out with us or if you can find a spot where you have a good signal so you can join into a regular conversation with us. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear me. <laughs> I, I'll take a seat on one of these benches. Okay. Uh, and uh, and if I if you can hear me, that's great. And if not, and you know, I'll I'll make myself scarce. Hey, look, the mighty MG. Look over right. there, the mighty MG5. Whoa, All right. That. My parents just bought one of those. Uh, oh really? My mum and my uh, my stepdad uh, got theirs a couple of weeks ago, and they love it. And uh, but my wife wouldn't let me buy the the mighty MG5 because she says it looks like an old man's car. And as I pointed out to her. I'm no spring chicken, so uh, maybe I fit the old man car, but uh, she, she wanted to buy the ZS EV. So we do have an MG, but just not that one. Right on. All right. So, okay. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing about the uh, Toyota BZ4X from uh, Kyle here, but I think first we should hear from our special guest, uh, Miss Go Electric. So, uh, Lacey, welcome. And I understand that you attended the Ford F-150 Lightning launch the other day. Uh, but you also spent some time recently with the BMW iX, and you put out like the most amazing video the, with it the other day. Um, so let me just say, it has to be one of the best review videos I've, I've seen in a while. Um, like it's Thank really you. good. Like you wow. cover all, you cover all <laughs> kinds of things I haven't seen other people mention, and you have like good videography, even like a car follow shot in there. And then you're popping all kinds of info on the screen, like all the, the various ranges you could expect to get with different size tires, and it's like. It's like you know it's a lot of work i know you put a yeah. lot of effort in, into <laughs> making that video so if you haven't uh if you haven't watched it you probably should and also sub subscribe to her channel the more subscriptions she gets the more uh invites she gets to go to uh, you know events and uh gets to show you know do this kind of work with other cars so definitely subscribe to her your channel um so let's see it's so yeah um so tell us a bit about the uh, BMW iX. I think like uh, Kyle has seen it, and um, I think. And I know um, Tom said that he, you know, he really likes it. Um, and I know you guys have talked about it before. I, I spent a whole day with it down in South Carolina, at the Performance Center and around the facility, around the plant, driving it around all day. 
And, um, you know, I, I used to work as a contractor for BMW, so I've spent a lot of time in their cars. So I think, you know, my perspective of, you know, I've spent time in all of their cars and I really am a fan of SUVs as if you guys follow me, a lot of people know that because I like to take my bike rack uh, and bring my e-bikes with me. When I go places, I like to go camping and really use the vehicles um, and this form factor helps uh, with that. So I really love the iX. Uh, I just always have felt that BMW has been a leader in innovation and the types of features and technology. So if you've seen my video, I only touched like the surface of <laughs> the things that they've integrated in the in the iX and that they've had some of them in previous BMWs for a while now, but I really love the iX. And yeah, I'm, I'm talking right here about how the front grille is really polarizing and it's really not my cup of tea, but honestly, like once you get in the vehicle and you, you're driving it, it's just so impressive. And I really love it with the drive modes. There's a, a very big difference between them. And I'm a huge fan of that. When I, when I change drive modes, I want to feel like I'm in a different car. Um, the just technology that's in it is outstanding. So yeah, I really, I love the iX, but the, the, the deal breaker, which is when I was recently shopping for a car, I just got a Tesla Model Y about a month ago. Okay. Um, and when I was shopping, I actually specifically was looking to get something that had a, a, a receiver for a tow hitch. And uh -huh. uh, mostly, like I said, to just take my e-bikes and stuff with me and uh, use it when I go camping and everything like that. So unfortunately, the iX doesn't have that. But man, after I drove this, I was like, oh, God, I really... I want to just trade in my Model Y and get this. <laughs> it's that good. It's pretty up, up spec too, though, right? Is that the price is quite yeah, a bit higher one, than the Model? Yeah. Yeah, this one was. I think the way this one was listed was about a hundred or so, um, but they started uh, about eighty. Yeah, that's not so bad. Oh, that was an interesting thing you pointed out here. So it has like an onboard eleven kilowatt hour charger, but the the uh, the actual EVSE they, they offer you is it's like 9.6 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like it doesn't take full advantage of the, the ability of the car. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. It must just be whoever they're working for as a, you know, with the supplier for that charger, it seems to me. I, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, that's kind of an interesting choice that they're not going to try to max that out. Right. I also thought it was interesting. Look, you even have yourself pop up on the screen. You got all the, I mean, this is like amazing work, Lacey. Thank you. Like, yeah, I spent a lot of time on it, so I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Also, so you have this little bit in the back, you're in the back seat. And on the, on the foot, well, there's something kind of lit up at one point. I'm not sure if I can find it here for sure. But uh, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about here? Like, like it, right there in that shot, you can kind of see it underneath the foot well. Yeah, it seemed like it was like some kind of a venting system underneath, like when I'm when I'm sitting in the back seat. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm it's like right searching for that. I'm like searching all over for it. Uh, yeah. Oh well. It cuts quick. <laughs> yeah, and, and I also like you were talking about the uh, the crystal knob shifter on the in the front, mm -hmm. and that you can. Yeah, you can see there, but you can like trace your finger around it and like spell out things. Yep. To, to, like I, I didn't even know that was a thing. That was like. Yeah, they've cool. had that functionality on the iDrive controller for a really long time, but I didn't think it would work with this crystal design. And what I was like, let's see. <laughs> I started writing. I'm like, oh, sure enough. They actually were able to integrate it on that too. And yeah, it just, I think it looks, it's just so pretty. And the interior is so comfortable. Um, I, I love the new iDrive system. Yeah, I, I really like the iX. Nice. At 500 top speed, 124 miles an hour. You got all this information popping up on the screen here. That's great. Um, so what, what do you think of the driving dynamics? Uh, I drove most of the time in sport mode, which is really uh, responsive. But it was funny because as we were going, Tim, Tim my producer, he, and my camera guy, he's like, Okay, you gotta you gotta change it out because it's just like so intense. I kept like <laughs> accelerating really hard, and he's like, I, I can't handle it back here anymore. You have to turn it into efficient mode. <laughs> so, I'm like, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> so did it make a big? Uh, it makes a really big difference. 
sport to e is it eco? Yes, or? it's called efficient. So they've changed. Okay. It used to be like comfort, eco, um, you know, individual and uh, sport, but now it's personal, which is the customization mode, um, efficient, and sport mode. So the efficient mode, it really does tone it down a lot, and it is really designed to maximize the range as much as possible. Uh, and it has this like efficiency trainer. So it like the personal assistant will talk to you and tell you like ways that you can drive more efficiently to maximize the range. We're talking about regenerative braking and all these other things and acceleration and all that. Right on. Let me advance forward. Okay. So um, overall, yeah. I loved the ADAS, the, the, and I've like I've said I've spent a lot of time in these cars and I've I've always really liked their system as far as it goes when you're on the highway and it keeping you in the lanes and stuff like that. I felt like this did a much better job than previous generations of keeping it centered in the lane. The lane changing was super fast. Um that was I was very surprised by that because most systems just kind of gradually take you over into the lane very like slowly and smoothly. This was like, I'm getting you over. It would like dive into the lane and then straighten out real quick. Right. But, I um, saw that. So Kyle, did you have that experience? Did you find? Uh, so have not used the driver assistance in the IX. Lacey spent a lot more time with it than I have. I only okay. had it for 20 minutes, something like that. But we have oh, a really? Game. We have I4 this week and we have IX coming in a little bit for to spend some time with but yeah Lacey, love it around uh you know sort of greer that entire facility in south carolina isn't that just the best place on the planet yeah it was great i know that's your former home kind of so yep. yeah i was uh, i was spoiled i was yep. like really spoiled getting that car for a whole day and they gave us a little access to the i i mean they gave us full access to the i4 and the ix but i spent so much time with the ix that i um, didn't have as much time with the i4. So I do have some stuff that I'm going to be putting out about the i4, but it's more of like a snapshot, smaller scale versus like this was, I mean, this was 21 minutes long. This was a long video, um, but I went in, in deep dive depth with this one. So um, hopefully we'll get another i4, but yeah, I didn't do any like charging tests or anything like that. So I'm excited to see your review, Kyle, because I, I want to see how that, I've I've seen the charts for their charge curve and everything like that, but I really want to see how you, how you. Yeah, put we'll it to probably the test. match whatever they say. I mean, you you just you have a physical limitation of 500 amps on CCS, so it's not going to be big numbers no matter what we do. What what's the peak charging? 190 or something? Yeah, 200. Yeah, just about. I mean, you're just never going to get more than that on a 400 volt system car. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, it has this weird oh rear, rear steer. I, for some reason, it didn't click into, with me that it, the BMW iX has rear steer. Mm -hmm. that, that, so that was cool. But it also had that weird uh, parking memory. So it'll back itself out by memory. It kind of remembers how it pulled in and it will do the thing. same thing in reverse or something. Yeah. So it, it has a backup assistant. So what it does is it remembers your path into your driveway. So if you live in like an area where you have a really long driveway and it's super tight and you don't want to back it out, it will remember that path and you just you press the button and it will take control of everything and it'll back you up in that same path so you don't hit anything it, it is i love that and they've had that for a little bit but i just love that feature it's just such a great usable feature for people who live in those types of situations so we're watching your video on the on the screen here now and just you're doing this self-parking thing where it's backing itself into a parking spot so it got really close to that that uh, was that Mini Cooper on yeah. the side. So it got, did, did it get so close that the uh, proximity sensor sounded or anything? Yes. Yeah, so they were going, oh, okay. they were going off. But the the thing was is that I I actually tried this twice, and the first time that I tried it, I was so nervous that I actually put on the brake. And last iteration of the system, it would actually completely. Um, disable the system if you did that and this time it didn't i was kind of surprised by that too it was like okay i put my foot on the brake and then it it still once i released off of the brake it still started performing the maneuver so i was i was very um happy about that too because a lot of the systems just like if you touch the steering wheel or if you engage at all it right. will automatically shut off so, but 
So I, I recently did this with the uh, Kia EV6, and like, so we're it was parking itself in there, but it would get so close to like this pole that was sitting there, and then the proximity sensor would go off. And like, I didn't trust it. Like, if it doesn't, like, if the sensor is like beep beep beep, chart, you know, suddenly the alarm. I don't know. I, I I'm like I have to put my foot on the brake because it's not my car. I, I don't want it to bump into a, you know, back into a pole. I, I don't know. That's it seems like a, a really bad way of doing things. I don't know. And this this system moved really fast. Like just like the ADAS, it, I like they've tuned it really. They fine tuned it so that all the maneuvers are happening very smoothly, but they're happening really quickly too. So um, yeah, I was I was like. I was so nervous, but then Tim was, he got out and was shooting me from the outside perspective. And he's like, oh, you have plenty of room. Don't worry. And even though I could see it, I was just like, I still feel like I'm so close by looking at the mirrors and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was just one of the parking features. Like it does some, some remote parking and stuff like that too, that I didn't have a okay. chance to show, but yeah, it's, it's just an incredible machine, that thing. There you are showing off that, you know, you could... Uh, trace the word go on the on the crystal shifter mm -hmm. thing that's great all right um let's take that off so yeah so if you like again if you haven't seen uh, Lacey's bmw ix video i highly encourage you to go check it out check out our channel subscribe to it and all, all that stuff um we sh you guys should write an article about it on your uh inside ev site yeah, uh, actually, I was going to put it in front of the editors. I'm not sure what we have in the way of uh, IX reviews, but if, you know, if we don't have anything, you know, I thought it was a great one that uh, I'm going to I'm going to put in front of them at least. Yeah. Um, so you are also at the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning launch at the Rouge Factory EV Complex in Dearborn, in Michigan, and you not only got to ride in the truck and ask questions, but you got to hang out with Jim Farley, who is like CEO of Ford, Darren Palmer, who is uh, head of electrification, I believe, who was with us before on our show here. And he's a great, great guy. And Joy... Uh, Falatico. Falatico, thank you. And she is the president of Lincoln. And you got to hang out with Sandy Monroe. Who That's right. <laughs> people might know as the, the teardown specialist who's you know more recently been tearing down a lot of Tesla stuff. And um, is a big fan of what they're doing over there. So you have you already have one video up coming, uh, one video up covering this event already. And I think you might have another another one coming. Yeah. So I have an extended version of Sandy and I walking through the assembly line. So essentially, the video that I put out of the launch event in the assembly line tour was uh, kind of a comprehensive of like this is the whole event that I experienced, kind of like a vlog. Um, and then a little bit of talking with some of the executive team. And then uh, I just picked some of the, you know, key highlights from the tour with Sandy and put it in that. But I'll have an extended version coming up probably today of uh, the Sandy and I assembly tour walk, which it was funny because we so it all started at World Headquarters where they had rides that you could take in the F-150 Lightning, which is that was my first time riding in it. It was very smooth. Um, it's fast for a pickup, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, after I got done riding in the F-150, we were about to go over to the shuttle buses that they had a ton of shuttle buses to take all the media over to the complex where the plant is. And um, I turn around and I just see Sandy, walk, Sandy walking around. And I had, um, I've spent a lot of time with those guys. I've been over to their facility and we were hanging out at CES and stuff like that. So I'm like, I yell, I'm like, Sandy. And he turns around, he's like, oh my God, hi. And I was like, where's your crew? Like, where's your camera guy or whatever? And he's like, oh, we, you know, we only had one invite. So we were able to, uh, weren't able to bring the, the guys. So he was just walking around by himself. I'm like, well, you can hang out with us for the day. And um, he's like, okay, great. And so when we got to the plant facility, he was like, I want to walk the assembly line. I'm like, great, let's do it. And so we recorded a, a whole piece of Sandy taking us down the assembly line and showing us, you know, this is what and this step is. And I like how they did this and I don't understand that. So there's a lot of really cool insight that Sandy provides us. It's his expertise, but also he used to work at Ford. So it's just really interesting to hear him talk about that whole experience and, uh, say really the things that he appreciated from what Ford's doing on that particular line because this is a this building was um, completely renovated to support F-150 Lightning and they made it as big as big as they possibly could but also Sandy mentioned you know 
they said they were going to do 150,000 units, but he seemed to think that it looked big enough that they might be able to pr produce more. So they they might be under promising and over delivering. But yeah, it was just it was really great to walk with him down the line and hear all his insights. So, uh, and I noticed on the ride over, you passed by a parking lot that was like full of F Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightnings as well. So they already, but they produce been producing them for a little while, right? Yeah. So Jim Farley said that they've got about two thousand right now that have been produced, and in that lot, I mean, there were hundreds. They were just sitting there in the lot, getting ready to ship to the dealers to their new owners. Um, so I think that's kind of their their uh, whole idea is that they're going to under promise and over deliver so i think these are going to get to customers pretty quickly and they said you know they're doing a media drive i think kyle you said you're going to the media drive right yep be there on tuesday oh, so awesome. yeah that's coming up pretty quick so people are actually going to get some time behind the wheel to actually do reviews and stuff so are we talking for f-150 lightning next week kyle uh no i think the embargo is may 10th oh okay but I'm sure we can talk about like everything. I think Ford usually on their programs just embargoes driving impressions okay. because we've been able to do everything else with a stationary F-150 Lightning. And yeah, I was really bummed to have missed uh, this event. We have just been filming like crazy, so couldn't justify taking two two days basically to go out and see all this. But uh, watched uh, watched a whole bunch of videos from yourself and other creators, and it was awesome to see all the excitement. And uh, yeah, cool stuff for sure. I like, I like this shot. Like, so we're watching uh, Lacey's video here on YouTube, and it's got uh, her, her and Sandy Monroe are walking around like the chassis of a uh, Ford F one fifty Lightning. It's on like the one of the little automated robots that carries a piece of you know pieces chunks of the truck all around the factory. Um, and you can see like the frame, the battery inside, the components, everything is kind of wired up. This is like my favorite shot of, of the F one fifty Lightning because you can actually kind of see, you know, you know how they've built it. You know, it's got the traditional kind of frame, right? I believe. Yeah, it's body on frame. So uh, right. it, uh, there are a couple things that are a little bit different um, because uh, the F-150, th this is like the first implementation of the independent rear suspension. So he was okay. commenting on the castings in the back, which he thought were really impressive and huge. Right. Um, and then also it has dual onboard chargers. So like mounted above the two motors on either axle, uh, you know, there's just quite a lot more going on than um, typically what you would see. But um, yeah, so he was commenting on that kind of stuff too, which was interesting. It was interesting. Uh, so this little back back of the footage we went by, you had some footage where you, this big machine, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, this thing. I did. Uh, so I saw this in, in pictures in footage and like, what is that? So tell us what this is. So essentially the F-150 Lightning and other F-150s have a onboard scale system, which tells you how much is in for your payload. So if you are bringing a bunch of stuff and the girl t touched on it at the beginning of my video a little bit, or if you have like a bunch of mulch in the back of the truck and you go to the onboard scales system, it will tell you exactly how much there is if you're overloading so that you can take some out and it's you know safe for the amount that you're using, I think it's just over 2000 pounds for the payload. So what that that machine does is it takes that swing arm and puts the pressure on the back of the bed in order to uh, calibrate the onboard scale system. And that ramp is a scale itself. So that's how it determines the appropriate, you know, calibration. Cool. That, yeah. that's, that's pretty nifty. So also getting back to, to, to the front, for the beginning of the video, uh, they mentioned something else. You asked about uh, differentials, locking differentials. Yeah. And I think she misspoke because she said something about the front differential locking, oh, okay. but I think she meant the rear. <laughs> okay. So, so it has a uh, rear lock. So the rear differential can like physically lock. Yeah. Okay. That should come in handy. We've seen We've been talking about this uh, on the show recently with with Kyle, uh, talking the Rivian R1T, and like the uh, the Hummer EV does this as well. The Hummer EV locks physically in the front, but it has a virtual lock in the back. But the, the four wheel, the four motor R, uh, EVs, they do some virtual locking, but apparently it's, it hasn't been working that well off road in some situations. But, but you know, so it's interesting that the Ford F one fifty Lightning has like a, a mechanical you know, locking thing. So supposedly that should work better, right, Kyle? He's on mute. <laughs> he's, he's <got> it. <laughs> Sorry, my mouse wasn't working there. Uh, okay. uh, physical lockers will always work better than virtual lockers, at least with software that I've experienced. 
right on. All right. Uh, yeah. So in, in, anything else you learned? Uh, yes. So-, um, so actually, I chatted a little bit with um, Jim Farley uh, for about like five minutes, which I was a little uh, shocked by, but he came over and we started talking and he was telling us about future product, which I thought was really interesting. Right. Um, so he said that this new truck, and I'm sure some people have seen articles about it, that they've spent the last two years developing this new truck that's going to be built down in Tennessee. And he mentioned to me some interesting things about it having a very radical design and uh, being controversial. Uh, but it also has um, active and deployable aero. And so they're really trying to aim towards like like very high efficiency with this next truck. And he also said that it's going to be, I think, 7000 Was it $7,000 different of the... Uh, of the F-150 Lightning uh, for the price point or a okay. hundred miles difference in more range. Um, so he was just like that the efficiency that we're achieving is pretty drastic. Uh, so I just, th- I thought that was fascinating. The whole concept of deployable aero, he said flaps like, you know, you would see on like a semi truck. So okay. yeah, I was like, hmm, so, fascinating. So there- so during the presentation, um, he, he said his, his like to so everybody, and this is what people wrote up in their articles. So he said, I wish we could bring you all down there, but we're already pushing dirt down in Blue Oval City in Tennessee for another electric pickup truck that's different than this one. And, you know, when they when they first you know talked about opening up the, the big uh, comp, uh, manufacturing complex in Tennessee, uh, they were talking about the next generation electric F-series trucks as well as advanced batteries. So in my mind, I was thinking like, okay, it's like the, the basic platform with the F-150, the F-250, 350, and, you know, but this sounds, I don't know, this sounds like a, something that's like totally different. Maybe they'll do that as well, but yeah. this sounds like a totally different thing that they're going to they're gonna sell at the same time as the F-150 Lightning. That's what it sounded like to me. I mean, I, I think probably they have a couple more years till that comes out. Um, well, that they're going to be building it down in that Tennessee plant. So they still got a little bit. But uh, yeah, I he was very passionate and excited to tell us that. So uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see what comes of this. Okay. Right on. That's, well, that's a pretty interesting, active, and what did you say? Deployable arrow. arrow like, Deployable. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking of like an active arrow system coming out the back of the taillights or something like that. I don't know. It's Right, like on the Mercedes EQXX thing that had the back section that kind of just like extends out as it's going. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how they implement something like that on a pickup truck. Yeah, so that's like 400 miles of range possibly then? He said about 100 miles of range more. So if the F-150 Lightning has 320 for the most, I mean, maybe, yeah, like 420. Right. Kyle, any any thoughts about this? Uh, No idea. I mean, it all sounds pretty interesting. Right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it just caught my ear when he said it. You know, it's like, you know, it's kind of like perked up because, you know, he put like a lot of. Uh, emphasis on it and you know we, we so we heard the the announcement you know last year that they're going to be building trucks but this just sounded like very intriguing like oh and yeah so i mean uh we we wrote a story about it i think motor one has a story as well and i saw other outlets you know pick that up um so anything else we want to talk about here yeah i mean it fancy, was it, it was fun fancy coffee yeah, it was like put a little logo on there. No, it was great. Yeah, check out my video if you haven't seen it. All right. Um, all right. So, Kyle, so you had the pleasure of spending time this week with a couple interesting Toyota products, the Toyota Mirai and the BZ4X. Now, I really want to hear about the BZ4X a lot, uh, but I know you were very excited about the Mirai and you got to learn how to use the hydrogen dispenser. So, do you want to start there? Yeah, I mean, I don't think hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicles should be really considered electric cars. So I'm not sure we really need to harp on it on this podcast. Thought it was fascinating. I don't, I'm not saying I think it's better than battery electric or not the direction we should go for for passenger vehicles. 
Um, but, but it was really interesting to experience hydrogen for the first time, find all the quirks, the weird things about it, how it drives these things. Um, it's something that I've always just kind of poo-pooed the idea of hydrogen for passenger cars, but it actually works in Southern California based off of our experience. I know the infrastructure is the biggest problem. Um, and like for a battery electric vehicle is much more efficient in terms of the use of your electricity and how it's generated. And so, yeah, battery electric for passenger cars probably is the answer. But we have a electrolyzer hydrogen fueling station that's sitting in our parking lot of our office here at Colorado State University, and it will be generated mostly by clean energy or powered by clean energy. And I'm like, well, uh, you can buy a used Mirai for like 30 grand and there's right. 70 grand new. I'm talking like with a thousand miles on it. So I'm like, that would be really fun to run one for a year, see what it does in the coldest temperatures, the warmest temperatures. And because it's not necessarily practical or feasible to drive a, a, a medium or heavy duty truck every day to the airport, do the runs, all this stuff. Uh, I thought it'd be a fun like airport executive luxury shuttle because it's basically a Lexus LS underneath, just a little bit shorter. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I would like to use the Mirai to learn about what I think is the best application for hydrogen, which is medium heavy duty stuff, fleet stuff. But um Learned so much with this car, really did, and was uh, honestly impressed. We took it on a road trip. We did a whole bunch of stuff, and the infrastructure, at least for us, worked perfectly. And uh, it, they just don't work outside of California at all. So yeah. if we got one here, we would just be on a 150-mile leash from the office. We, we'd have to turn around, come back, and charge, which would work for like 99% of my driving. So this is on your other spec reviews channel. We just got, had the little thing flash. So uh, I like... I don't know. So we're watching this right now on your on your your video on the screen here. If you're listening to us, um, so it's got the Mirai. You've got the Mirai on the screen on the parking uh, parking garage in uh, downtown. Not, where is that? Pa no. Pasadena. Pasadena, right? Um, it, so I've seen this in person. I've actually driven a little bit, and you know, some cars you think they're maybe ugly when you first see the picture of them. And then you go and see them in person, and it's like, oh, actually, that works. The, the, it doesn't work for me. I don't know the Mariah. You're like this is like the styling on the other side. Really? I think it looks awesome. I think oh, really? <laughs> it looks great. It drives great. Really? Honestly, the car I thought was like fantastic. Mostly because like it's all fascinating to me. The drivetrain was truly fascinating. It was really right. fun to use the stations. It was more for me about learning or having my first experience with hydrogen rather than it was about the Mirai, really. Right, right. And we went to LA to do a whole bunch of BZ4X testing because I asked Toyota, like, hey, when are you going to send one of those out to us in Colorado? And they were like, ooh, not for a long time. So I'm like, okay, we'll go wherever they are. So that's okay. what happened. So, like, so the, the Mirai driving experience, what did you think of that? Because I thought it, you know, it, it drove like in a straight line, at least pretty decently. You know, but I, I actually know. It cornered pretty well too. I took it up in the canyons. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, you, so just like really nicely balanced. Um, you know, it's, it's rated at nine second zero sixty. I think Motor Trend tested at seven something. So it's not it's not that slow, but you do have to use wide open acceleration at higher speed. And like that's fine with me. I don't mind going wide open all the time. I think that's kind of fun. It's just like a comfortable luxury electric sedan thing, but it's a Toyota, so it's not pretentious and it's so weird in so many ways. It makes these hissing noises. And when you floor it, water comes out the back and it's crazy and the best. And I love all that stuff. I like it because it's fascinating, not because I think it's better. Right, right, right. Uh, I get you there. Um, I don't know, Lacey, do you have any, any Mariah questions? I think it, what you just said was kind of interesting is that when you floored it, that the water came out the back. I feel like that is kind of like, for the people that are big, like internal combustion engine people that might be like a slight you know fix for what they're missing with full bevs i don't um, think that's going to do it <laughs> combustion cars and go i love the stuff coming out of the exhaust <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm reaching <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, there's it's it's compromised in many ways but it can start at minus 30 degrees celsius which i thought was very interesting because you would think it would just freeze up at freezing and like wouldn't work, but they have oh, heaters. Oh, well, because it has water coming out. Yeah, but oh, it right, has heaters, right. so it can do. It can start down to minus thirty. Nice. I don't know. I I don't know about hydrogen. I don't know. 
I mean, I think it's cool that you drove it. And like you said, the fascinating yeah. whole experience of trying the infrastructure, because that, that's one thing that I've heard kind of horror stories about is that even Same. even people, you know, filling it back up, it takes a longer. It's not as responsive as obviously like a, a gas pump, but it's not as, as long of a wait as a electric car. But well, it's actually so much less of a wait than an electric car, because in this case, we were able we did a, a dead to 100 percent full fill which gets you know about 300 miles driving it the way we were the car's rated for like 350 so like even cruising at 85 to 100 miles an hour down the highway i think it only does like 96 miles an hour allegedly but like just ripping in normal la you know free flowing traffic everyone does 100 miles an hour in la um you know it it got about 300 miles of range and i'm like well that's a really good took it up the right. canyons shredded wide open throttle the whole way up to newcomb's only burned a quarter of a tank up and back, which in a battery electric vehicle, I toast full battery doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's like 30, 40 mile loop, maybe 45 mile loop. And that's a full battery charge in most cars for me. And so like was impressed with those two things. And then with a battery electric vehicle, especially in Southern California, a lot of people don't have access to home charging. And this is really the only use case I see where this is better than a battery electric vehicle. And it's if you have to rely on DC fast charging to get a full charge, you have to wait an hour in, in some cars. Mustang Mach-E, you have to wait two hours. BZ4X, over five hours. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> but in the Mirai, four minutes, 45 seconds, zero to 100% full range in that period of time. Now, most people will DC fast charge their cars to 70, 80%, and it takes anywhere from I don't know, 15 to 45 minutes in most cars, but still 15 to 45 minutes, way more than hydrogen. And you get a credit card that you just get free hydrogen on for $15,000 worth. Right. For now. But, but hydrogen, actually, I think if it wasn't subsidized or given to you free, it's like, it's, it works out. I, I think it's like between seven and $9 a gallon or something, basically like the equivalent price. So it's, it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be cheap. No, you know, I think we calculated a full charge because I paid for it. I, Toyota gave us one of those cards. I just used my own to pay okay. for it because uh -huh. that's what we always do. We never ask for fuel from automakers or anything like that. So I just paid for all the fuel. And it was anywhere from about 60 to $80 from dead to full on, on our experience. Okay. That's not so bad. It was like the same as gas equivalent. We 300 found. miles of range. I mean, it would have caught, we figured out that basically it would cost the same as a normal other luxury v8 powered executive sedan which okay. would be equivalent to this right this makes less power and certainly there's minimal hydrogen stations i'm not saying it's better combustion is still better than this right you know in terms of usability if you don't have an apartment but right. if you want to drive electric and you don't excuse me and you don't have charging at home then you live in southern california and you can lease one of these things for 600 bucks a month which is the nicest car you can lease for 600 dollars a month and they give you free fuel like it just it works but just right like, yeah no, this is great it's, it, it's just a very limited use case right but i think but, for heavy duty stuff medium duty stuff where sort of density of battery packs and weighing things and you know you have the, the bigger batteries you put in it the less payload you have that's where this starts making some sense but i was really fascinated by the whole experience loved the mirai and would totally get one once our hydrogen station gets turned on here to run for a year and just see if we can break it right on hey so i noticed besides like the mirai that you also and the busy forks i just noticed on your channel now that you spent some time with the 2022 tesla model 3 performance and did a 70 mile an hour range test and you yeah. have a video now up on your on your channel since yesterday so and i, I saw you tweet about this or facebook or something that you, you said that like the the 2022 um, Model 3 performance is a lot different from the one that you had. Like, was it what your yours was 2019? Mm -hmm. So, in three years, what, what's changed for it? In uh, like almost everything. In many ways, the car has gotten worse. In many ways, the car has gotten better. We have a whole video covering this topic uh, also on this channel where we reviewed this car in Las Vegas. We took it up into the canyons and uh, essentially, yeah, had a great time. And yeah, it was pretty pretty fun it's it's soft it's like they they removed all the performance suspension out of the car so you're going around on ramps and it's like the dampers aren't even into the car you're just bouncing up and down it's not controlling body motions at all so in terms of performance the car's gotten worse 
But it, it's not to say that the, the previous car, the earlier cars were really that hardcore anyway. They rode rough, but when you really push them, they kind of are soft anyway. So you still need aftermarket suspension if you're going to use it for what the car is intended for, which is performance driving. Right. And um, that's, that's what's going to happen to this car. Drew's going to go through it, put wheels, tires, suspension, roll cage, everything. He can rip the weight out of it and go, nice. go full maxi max. So that'll be cool. Do you know what suspension he's putting in for, like from what supplier? Yeah, I think he's going to go KWV3s, I believe. And okay. then the nice thing about those is they're fully adjustable. So you can go super soft, but still have the car low or crank it up. Oh, nice. That sounds good. Yep. And uh, yeah, Drew, Drew and, and Alice, they're having their child here in a few weeks. So I ordered oh. them all the Recaro baby seat stroller combo oh. things. So Aww. they'll have the Model 3 with all the racing mods and the Recaro baby racing car seat, which will be awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm oh, congratulations, Drew and, and Alice. That's awesome. So yeah. you, you did a 70 mile an hour range test. I guess you're we should, we're mm -hmm. watching your video here. You're at the uh, charging station filling up. You just fast forward using that CCS to Tesla adapter there. Oh, okay. All right. And you put a towel on it too, right? Uh, no, that was a, that was when I did the charging test at the supercharger yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we're shooting a ton of videos right now, mostly because I'm planning to go on a road trip for three weeks or a month or so to Alaska. And we have to produce daily videos on this channel and also daily videos and other channels, other channels get one or two a week. So we're like bulk filming like crazy. Um, so that we can do this Alaska road trip in the in the sprinter. The true life of a YouTuber. Um, Content's key, right? And and the consistency, right? Yeah, we we just I mean we've committed to daily uploads for reviews, and so if we miss a day here, you'll see us put two up later on. We've just that's our plan. So seventy mile an hour um, highway range test. How to do? Uh, Two hundred eighty miles at seventy miles an hour, which is uh, exactly forty. And a bit more than my Model 3 performance, which has the smaller battery pack and it's degraded a little bit. So essentially, if I were to sell my Model 3, which I am, right. and then I was to get a new one, which I haven't planned to because I think I'd get an S, then um, yeah, I, I would gain realistically almost 50 miles of range by upgrading to the same car, but a newer model year. That's significant very significant and it's got a bigger battery pack so i was able to pull just about 80 kilowatt hours out of it at 70 miles an hour charges very differently than my car lots of differences all the videos coming so we we have plenty to talk about here but the car's so much quieter but like feels cheaper like the seats aren't as good steering wheel feels worse um you know still creaks and rattles in the new car like the whole seat creaks like it's not perfect autopilot totally crapped out on our range test and then like came back and started working again. So that still got the typical Tesla bugs here or there, but, but I just don't know what else you could buy for the money that, that drives as well as this car in terms of a performance setting. Right. You just get this slap a set of coil coilovers on it, get some sticky tires, pads, fluid for brakes, and you are an autocross King. Yeah. That's really good on tracks. Actually. Yeah. I've seen different, um, uh, different, different people uh, just mod their, you know, put different suspension on it, do some mods and take it to the track and they do, they get really good times with it. Yep. It's yeah. they're they're pretty serious machines when you drive them hard. And, and I, again, just, you can't ignore the value for money with a model three performance. It's just like anything, like you can get in any competitor at that price point and nothing will keep up with it. Right on. A any uh, Tesla model three, 2022 Tesla model three questions, Lacey? Well, I just, a point that you made about the ADAS of the autopilot, since I just got my Model Y, I've already taken on two road trips. One was down to Tennessee and then over to South Carolina for the BMW review. And then I just took it over to New York City for the New York Auto Show. And um, I will say mine's, my autopilot, there's a lot of phantom braking, which I don't like. Um, but I, I've been experiencing a couple issues with my autopilot too, so... Hmm. I, I know how you feel. <laughs> so, a lot of people have been attributing the uh, like an, it seems a seeming increase in phantom braking to the visual only setup that they're, they're using now. I don't know, Kyle. Did you mention that recent, recently? Uh, yep. Yeah, so I we actually just benchmarked both cars. So we you know we started this new driver assistance challenge. Right. So right. Yesterday I ran the vision car and my radar car. It was actually the last video I shot with my car before it leaves. Okay. And um, yeah. So so vision. Well, we'll just wait. We'll let you see the results. 
but I'll tell you this. Vision didn't phantom break in our test, and the radar car did. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, yeah. in our Model S, we have, like, I felt like there's, like, no phantom breaking, and that has radar as well. Mm -hmm. um, I and still experience phantom breaking on radar cars, but I've... Um, and on the range test, the camera only car did phantom break a couple times. But like my, so does my radar car. I, basically, yeah. I haven't spent enough time. Like you've done a lot more on the vision car than I have. Um, but I will say there's this one point on I-25 because I do that Denver, Fort Collins slog all the time. And no matter what Tesla I'm in for like the last four years, it's just full breaks every time I go to this bridge. Every update, mm -hmm. you would think Tesla would just be like, oh my God, why does every Tesla hit the brakes here? And you know, I've tried the whole warn everyone button it doesn't do anything no one looks at that stuff and so yeah it's just silly john gordon says on, on the chat definitely have phantom braking with my model y more at night than during the day is, is that something that you see uh, too lacy um i have noticed it uh kind of like the in between time when sun is starting to set uh, that's like right. the sweet spot where it's i think maybe detecting more shadows or more crowns on the road or something i don't right. know right and you know what's incredibly infuriating about the new uh, uh, camera only cars is at nighttime when you're on autopilot, they force auto high beams on, even if you try and turn it off, which is just aggravating because if anyone's ever been in a Tesla or really any car with auto high beams, they suck so much. Oh, really? They truly suck. And so I'm driving through the middle of Nebraska in this range test and everyone oncoming is just flashing me. And I'm like, I'm trying to turn the headlights <laughs> off over and over. So bad. So I, I used to drive at night like for a living for like almost 15 years. It was like driving at night was my thing. And that sounds like hell. <laughs> it's just, yeah. High beams are like, oh my God. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk about uh, BZ4X. Um, so I, I, I did get to see this car in person, but I haven't driven it. and But you have now. And I don't know, it's, it's, this is a weird car. So this is like the first modern electric Toyota. I mean, Toyota's had a few electric vehicles before. They've had the RAV4 EV. Um, they've had a couple of odd EVs like in, in Europe and Japan. But this is, I think this is a really, really, you know, they're going to have a lot more electric vehicles coming in. And this is like the first one of that onslaught. And it has a twin in, over at Subaru, the Solterra. And a sort of twin in the Lexus RZ 450e that uh, Tom is driving right now, and so yeah, so I don't know. Tell us about this thing. Well, we missed the first drive just because we couldn't make it there. So we, you know, we asked Toyota, you know, when's the next earliest opportunity for us to get a video on it, and that that's why we went out to California because they're just not coming to Colorado quite yet. I mean, the response when I asked if it's coming to Colorado was pretty funny. They're like, Ooh, nope, not anytime soon. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, went out to LA, uh, picked it up and, and honestly, overall really surprisingly liked it a lot. Okay. A lot. And like, good. it's the right size. It actually looks great in person. I think maybe not great, but looks good in person, at least not offensive. I thought, uh, they right. should have just called it the RAV4 electric because it feels about the same size. It's got really good ground clearance, incredible off-road or sort of soft road drivetrain control with this X mode. We have a whole video on our out-of-spec overlanding channel of us putting wheels in the air and watching it send torque translationally across the axle. Oh, and really? um, yeah, it came out, you know, it's really fun to watch it crawl up stuff, which was pretty cool. And um, yeah, I, I, as a driver, just... Awesome. Like if you, there, see, here's the thing. There are so many Toyota people that will only drive a Toyota. And if they're getting out of their Corolla or RAV4 hybrid or even RAV4 prime, this is going to feel like a noticeable step forwards. This is going to be the future to them. Now, if you're getting out of a e-tron ix or you know model y this is like okay there's a little bit of a step back but for a lot of people this is good and the car can do what most people needs to do what, what yeah and so i i think it's got plenty of acceleration the driver assistance was surprisingly wonderful compared to other toyota stuff i tested stayed right in its lane no ping ponging can't wait to run it through our hogback challenge Dual motor setup was tuned pretty well. I still don't understand why it only makes 10 kilowatts more than the front wheel drive car, but you know, whatever, drove fine. 
and it's just expensive. So the price is the big issue here where okay. when you when you start looking into things, uh, you know, the one we tested was like 51 grand. And it's like, okay, you can still get the $7,500 tax credit, but that is sunsetting very soon. So like get yours now, but they're not yeah. making many of them this year. Um, if this start, if the base price of this car was like 32 to 35, I would be like, go buy one right now. But it's just, that's, that's cheap expensive. though for, there's not too many electric vehicles that are in that 32, 35. That's like a, a Bolt EV territory. Right. But that's where we thought maybe Toyota could come out with and use their massive scale to bring the price down and, you know, maybe not have the best on paper statistics, but really come in at a lower price. And they didn't do that. So then you have to compare this car in the wheelhouse of certainly ID4, but most yeah. notably Ionic 5 and EV6. And that's where it's just like falls apart. And right. so, you know, if you, if you start looking at a reasonably equipped SEL all wheel drive Ionic 5, it's significantly faster, significantly better looking. And here's the thing, the BZ4X is fine, until you have to take a road trip. And that is where it is truly, unbelievably hot garbage. Uh oh. <laughs> Technical term. Right, right, right. So, so before we get into that, real quick, the interior. So, I think you, you've said before that you didn't like the, the driver's display where it is, the way it's set up there. Was that yours? Yeah. Or was that, okay. So, in person, though, how'd you feel about it? Uh, yeah, fine, actually. Okay. It's weird, but functional. Yeah. Right. And you look at it over the top of the steering wheel, which is the most awkward feeling. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, I thought it was fine. And the displays are all typical Toyota, nothing fancy, nothing attractive. The infotainment is a North American only version of the infotainment. And I think Toyota missed the ball where they could have done a lot of customer education when it comes to electric cars, tips and tricks in the system. Here's how to find chargers. Here's how to activate the charger. Here's why you either should or shouldn't full charge your car every day like every other automaker puts in their little system. This has no guidance, no help. Good luck to whoever's buying this thing. And um, <laughs> it's just like they're, they totally don't understand what the end user needs in cars. You know, I've been saying this for the last you know, forever, but I've really hearkened on three points that every EV needs to have. And the reason I've, I've narrowed it down is so automakers can get it in their heads. They need route planning to get you to the station and to your end destination. And the route planning needs to be optimized for time. Leave a five or 10% buffer on arrival, use the bulk of the charging curve, and then tell the person when to go to the next charger. I have a whole video on this. The next is the battery needs to be preconditioned on the way to a charger. Right. The car knows you're going to a charger. Make sure it can handle max power. Number three, when you arrive to the charger that the car has suggested that you go to, you should plug in and charge. And there should be no fuss with apps or anything like this. It should just work. This is very elementary items that Tesla has been doing for 10 years now. And uh, well, battery preconditioning. Okay, let's just say at least five years now, four or five years now that, that other automakers have done on the CCS networks. It's doable. This car has none of them, but neither does ID4 and Ionic 5. Like it's for, it's just crazy to me what's going right. on. Right. So they're not alone in that respect, at least. It doesn't justify their decision. This is Toyota. Right. This is going to be everyone's first electric car. This is one of the largest auto companies on the planet. They have the resources and they must know that these things are needed and they haven't put it in their car. So as a daily driver, a commuter, you charge it at home, you're going to do everything around town with it, which is how most people drive anyway. Perfectly fine. I'm going to see a million of them here in Colorado. People are going to love them. They're going to be so happy with them. And it's a car I would recommend to a lot of people who want a little bit of a soft rotor, especially here in Colorado with how good it did on the trails. Great approach angle, good ground clearance, almost nine inches of ground clearance. It was really good for that kind of stuff. But if you have to take even one or two road trips a year, the charging is the major issue here. Okay. I think yeah. the ma isn't the max charge rate like 200 or something like that, but it's just like that end I saw in your video is like getting to a hundred percent is brutal because it drops to like five kilowatts or something like that. Right. So, so the car is rated for a peak charging rate of 100 kilowatts. That's what oh, they God, say. Oh God, that's what it was. Oh my <laughs> what, gosh. 100 kilowatt. What? What? Yeah. 100 kilowatt peak for the all wheel drive car. 
the front wheel drive car Yikes. has a peak of 150 kilowatts claimed. Now, you know, we can get cars in the right state for DC fast charging. We had the car in the right state multiple times. We saw a peak of 86 or 87. I can't remember kilowatts on this thing. So that's your peak. That only lasts from 0% to about 5%. That's oh your peak. God. And then it just boom, nosedives and it just nosedives all the way to single digits at 80 kilowatts. Oh, yikes. Yeah. So, so zero to 80, 80, 80 kilowatts, you mean 80%? Zero to 80% okay. is uh, one hour, two minutes, something like that, which oh, is yeah. kind of on par with what they claim. You're right. So, That's like twice as long as it should be. Well, it's, it's more than twice as long as what it should be compared to Ionic 5, which is 18 minutes, 10 to 80% and about 24 minutes from dead to 80. Right. I, I was just thinking, so this starts at $40,000, I believe, for the- 42, uh, right? Uh, for the, this is the ZVC. That's a 44. Yeah, 42,000, yeah, right, 42,000, right. But, but again, the front-wheel drive should charge yeah. much better. And in Europe, I have to mention, the all-wheel drive cars get the front-wheel drive battery pack here, which charge better, charges better. Right. So, so they have like the, two different India. battery suppliers going on here. There's one's from CATL and one's from Panasonic. Is it Panasonic? Okay. And is, is it Panasonic that's the slow one? I don't know which is which. I don't remember okay. offhand. I did I knew when I reviewed it, but now I'm all confused. Okay. <laughs> Either way, the all wheel drive one gets a seventy two point eight kilowatt hours versus seventy one point four that the front wheel drive gets, but charges incredibly frustratingly slowly. Right. That's kind of amazing. That's like Bolt EV territory, basically, right? It's, it's worse than a Bolt, I think, when you factor in, you know, having to do a top charge. And so that's the thing. Zero to 80 is where this car will live on a road trip. I guess you could do it. The problem is the range isn't that great on the highway. And I was planning on doing the range test. I went to the charger to do the range test, but it hadn't finished charging because range test, we have to leave full. It was three right. o'clock in the morning and I still hadn't finished charging. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I've been up forever. I literally would not make my flight home if i had done the range test uh because i had booked like two hours to charge this thing i'm like i know it's not going to be great but i didn't expect five hours and 30 minutes or so and it to still not have completed it didn't get to 100 percent on a dc fast charger in over five hours right oh my god yeah because at the top <laughs> is where they just they just turn down the tap to like one kilowatt at 95 percent I mean, I guess don't ever charge it over 90, 80% ever, I guess. I don't know. That's like... And the wild thing is you can even go in the car and turn down your DC fast charging speeds more. You can cap it at 75 mm -hmm. kilowatts or 50 kilowatts. Like, why would you ever want it to be slower than it ever does? <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, man, dude. So they, I guess the theory here is longevity. And we've always, we know this, that, that high charging rates at high states of charge are really hard on the pack. This is why it's going to be so interesting to watch EV6 and Ionic 5's battery degradation over, over time. Sure. Uh, because they stress the battery packs harder than just about anyone. Um, you know, and Porsche's right up there too, stress and everything. And e-tron, big e-tron, 150 kilowatts, way past 80% on the new software now. So this is just like, holy smokes, like... It would never work for my lifestyle because we need a, probably, you know, fast charging rate, rates and big range because we live out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, but but for many people who will never DC fast charge ever, which I would say is a large percentage of EV owners, is totally fine. Like I have friends that I would recommend to buy this car, even though the charging is not good. Right, right. Yeah, for most. Yeah. Uh, what's the range again on it? Uh, 222 EPA. I was seeing at highway speeds a little bit under 200. So I would say, I don't really know where it would come in, but it's not going to hit that at 70. Right. So that's like, oh, man. Oh, this man. is really like just for Toyota customers. I feel like, like the, like you said, this isn't made for someone that's like trying to compete against like, cause why wouldn't you buy the EV6 or the Ionic 5 over this uh, other than like styling? Cause those are pretty polarizing or dramatic well, this styling is polarizing too i would say yeah this is pretty polarizing i mean I, yeah. I didn't mind it in person but before i saw it in person i, I was like oh, what, what are you thing. even doing we don't even have to worry about who's going to buy it because they're going to sell every single one yeah. they can make for years and without any issue whatsoever 
I think pretty much we can say that across the gamut with all EVs right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, really not a bad car. Yeah. I, it was like actually impressively good and did things better than Ionic 5 and EV6 in the drivetrain department, I thought. It had oh, no okay. torque ripple at low speed. It had tons of torque that, you know, coming off road. I was just actually like in very impressed with certain key areas of this this vehicle that I'm like, no one's doing this as good as Toyota is with this in certain okay. areas. Specifically on this dirt trail, I was really impressed. And I right, think yeah, we can say the same probably for the Solterra is that it's it's going to be, you know, people that are loyalists that probably go for this and they're going to be happy with it. Yeah, it's like everyone who owns a Crosstrek in Colorado, which is every fourth car, <laughs> it will buy a Solterra and they're going to love them because they don't really leave Colorado because why would you? It's beautiful here. And, you know, this can get you up on the trails. You can go to any hike you want to in this thing. So we're watching the Autospec Overlanding Channel video you have with the BZ4X right now. And this is a great little trail that you're on. It's like, you know, it's a dirt bro. It's a very basically. soft roady trail. It's a little right. dirt, a little bit of stuff. It gets difficult great more views, towards though. the top. And yeah, beautiful views. And we were just like, let's find like, uh, you know, we, we flew in and we're like, look at all these dirt roads on top of these mountains. Let's go drive those. And that's what we did. It was great for that. Sweet. So like specifically, what like what does it do better like off road than that the Ionic Five or EV Six might not do? Well, to be fair, I have not off roaded those vehicles because okay. I feel like this has more ground clearance. But you're looking at it right here. See that wheel spin, and then watch yeah. it just pulls itself right up. And so okay. we split it up to make it a little bit more dramatic, right? But um, like at the end of the day, you just stay in the throttle for like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi. It goes, oh, we got wheel spin, and it goes clamps down on that, transfers the power over. Again, not as good as a locking diff or anything like that, but definitely like you could have a wheel in the air, two wheels with traction, no problem. You just mat the throttle. It sends the power where it needs to go. And that was very interesting. That's like a goat path here on there. A little bit, but if you go again, <laughs> it's deeper in the video, if you watch it, you can skip all the fluff at the beginning um, because I, I'm known to ramble at times. Uh, you can go nah. deep in the video and you'll see, you know, where we really genuinely have wheels off the ground and we can teeter the car and it was doing a good job. Right on. Okay. That's cool. I mean, I'm enjoying watching this little, little video. If we talk about anything else, I, I feel like we should just keep this up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's great. Yeah. So, um, so charging's not good. Price is not good, but the build quality, the way the thing drives was very good. The driver assistance was very good. Yeah. Overall, pretty impressive vehicle. Interior quality, you felt it was fine? Yeah, I thought it was. And Better. it's got radiant heating, which is the first time, other than the IX, I've seen that in a car. That's true, right? It's got, like, by your knees or something, it's got radiant mm -hmm. heaters. I love that. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. It gets really hot. Like, don't touch it with your hands. Okay. Yeah, like, you you like go, tss, if you touch it. It was, it was pretty wild. Right on. Um, so anything else we want to talk about with the BZ4X at this point, then? uh it's not the most interesting car on the planet <laughs> right yeah i don't know i i, I haven't driven it so I, i'd have to do but i mean i'm looking it at my drives like a, every it drives exactly how you would think it would drive the brake pedal feels like every toyota hybrid on the planet where it does regen blending um it has regen boost they claim it has one pedal driving right you actually need to use two pedals for it right <laughs> which makes no sense because it doesn't no, come to a stop i mean toyota's also people who who had advertised a self-charging hybrid too so did they ever advertise that in the u.s do you know no, that's a uk thing i think right so yeah you know, i don't know we i i cover our market so I don't... but but yeah but one I it was cool that you know the toyota people i know the people at toyota in the u.s and they were like actually genuinely excited about this thing you know like right, a lot yeah. of people like to say that toyota is just like the the devil and people hate them in our community right. but i i'm not here to i don't analyze companies i'm not into stocks that's not my world just give me the car i don't care who makes it you can cover the badge and i'll tell you what i think and i thought it was a really good car if you'd never dc charged it which is why their first drive programs were never dc charging because it would have been bad for the all-wheel drive one at least i'm going to test the front wheel drive pretty soon okay uh, i thought it was um yeah, just just like a, I'd be like, this is this is awesome. This is like the ultimate what everyone wants: a small SUV, CUV that's not pretentious, that doesn't look like a spaceship, that is capable wherever you need to bring it. And yeah, was was good at everything we did with it. See, I'm I'm looking at that range, and it's like, man, that just kind of barely gets me down to the beach and back. You know, like 200 I think miles. It's not too, I don't think it'd be too dissimilar from 
some of its other competitors. Like Bull TV, I think it would do a better job with range. But then I think this would probably ride better than the Bull TV. Oh, bolts are pretty, they ride pretty well, I think. Yeah, you think? This is soft too. Okay. Um, but I, I, ID4 is in that price range. I I really enjoyed that car yeah, like we a would, lot. We would get an ID4 over this. Like if yeah. we were shopping for a car for Alyssa, for example, who's sort of the prime target buyer in this kind of category because she's got the dogs and she wants to you know run around and she doesn't really take long road trips. So she wouldn't consider this. She would go ID4 probably is what, what she wants. Right. Uh, okay. So and anything any any uh BZ four X questions, Lacey? Uh, I just don't I don't like how they chose that this design choice to bring that um, you know, gray body cladding up to the headlamps. And I don't like it in the Solterra either. I just really despise right. that. But I mean that's personal preference, so I'm not surprised I like what you're saying I'm not surprised by by your review. Like everything that you're saying, I'm like, okay, yep, yep. Yep, like that's about right for their first. Yeah, EV. there's no surprises here other than how bad the charging is. Like I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't know anything could be this bad. That is. Yeah. I thought it was a joke when I first plugged it in because we, we, you guys were at the the parking garage in Pasadena when we mm -hmm. all went out to Cali, and when I plugged it into the 50 kilowatt charger there, I plugged it at like 20%. This was on the first day before we did any charging tests and it said seven hours to full. I'm like, well, that's a software bug because it must think we're level two charging. No, that does factor the time for a full charge on whatever charger you're on. Now, granted, it was only a 50 kilowatt charger, but like seven hours. That is kind of nuts. That yeah. is, yeah. See, Peter Wright in the comments agrees with me. Bolt ride is very harsh. I've, you can I, instrument I've, it. I have I have literally boxes of instrumentation of accelerometers and a whole bunch of cool stuff. We got all this nerdy stuff from NI, all these right. crazy sensors and things, and okay. we're, we're we can instrument now ride quality. And Sweet. so I guarantee you, the bolt doesn't ride as harsh as you think it does. Okay. I mean, I I mean, I took an earlier one for the, for a test ride, and it was pretty short, and it was on kind of nice roads. Um, so. I'd like to try it again. Actually, I, I really want to buy one. So I, I put my... Uh, what? My, you want to buy... Why? Why not? Because I can afford it. It's, it's something I can afford. How much are they? Aren't they expensive? Uh, like 30000 Hopefully, if I can find a good deal, I'm hoping What's like 30000 What's a ID for? Hmm. Yeah. ID for rear wheel drive. Yeah. You don't need any more than that. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I put my spark in one of the online car companies that you know buys and sells cars, and they want to give me like four or five thousand dollars more than I paid for it. I'm thinking I really should probably take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah, ID four is used are forty three grand. Right. So the Bull TV because it had this big battery uh, uh, recall issue, I think there's a good chance the price won't be quite as premium on those because people have you know worries concerns about you know battery issues in the future so it might not be the first choice for some people i don't know i really like the refreshed version of the of the uh bull tv i think they, they did a great job on the interior it's like livable i don't really really don't want like the first gen too much oh That's so you're like thinking a, about like the new new one yeah i mean it's so much nicer i mean the, the old ones is like a sea of plastic and it's like uh, i think the new one's still a sea of plastic I mean, but it's soft plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in your case, it's prettier, you don't really yeah. need fast, fast charging, but you would at least be able to cover the state of Florida if you needed to. Right, right. I, and it's got 200 and what, 50 miles of range? Yeah, real world. I think we tested right around 250 at 70 right. miles an hour. In that so day. I can get to the beach and back, no problem. Even in the wintertime, for me, that's like 100 miles each way. Uh, down by uh, Apalachicola, which is a great place to go they visit. They don't have any you... chargers down there, level twos or anything? They do, but you know, maybe I don't have time for that. Maybe I want to spend all my time fishing <laughs> or yeah. in, the, in the water, you know? I wouldn't understand that. I'm not a water guy, so that's... Oh, man. I would be like, Alyssa, Mountain you go dude. sit on the beach. I'm going to go charge the car. I just like floating in the, in the ocean is, is the best. Just float. Oh, no, that <laughs> is not for me. I, I <laughs> want no part of that. Right on. Um, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, anyway, so yeah, that's why I'm thinking like in my head, bolt make because maybe I can get a deal and I can get a you know 13 or 14 thousand dollars for my spark, which is like crazy money. And 
yeah i don't know i'm just wrestling with this right now but trying to find a bolt tv is like not easy either i, I saw one oh, great deal well, online we have and, like 50 of them sitting at our lot over here okay so we'll drive one out i, I think like even services like carvana and stuff have a ton of inventory on there too i don't know if you've checked any of those but the ones that i have also I, I did. Actually, I even I even inquired at one one it was like thirty thousand advertised thirty thousand is the new one and I think is it oh we don't actually sell them we don't actually have them it's like but you mm. advertising them on a website like <laughs> a big website and anyway and they haven't really got back to me except to send me junk emails um, <laughs> all right so we should talk about a little bit of news besides that a little bit. So there's not really, I mean, we don't really need to spend a whole lot of time. We're already an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, that's great. Um, so Subaru announced their uh, pricing for the uh, Solterra EV, which is the sister brother to the BZ4X. And uh, it's a little more expensive, 44995 starting at, plus uh, 1225 destination delivery charge, except for Alaska, where it's just a little bit more, 1375 Um that's not bad, right? Because for whatever reason, the Solterra still is eligible for the $7,500 federal tax rebate, right? Well, yeah, and so I think is the BZ4X today. Yeah, today, Toyota has right. a little bit longer until they hit that mark. Right. And then it'll ramp down. It's not like it just goes away. You get that right, the, the one-year like, phase out yeah. overall. Right. So I think by the end of the second half of this year, it might start phasing out. Yeah, so if your delivery is like December, you're probably going to get a thirty-seven fifty instead of a seventy-five hundred. Um, so the and also the Solterra does. So it's a little bit more expensive, but I believe there's a few. It does get a few features that the BZ4X doesn't get, and I forget what they are right now. You're on mute, but uh, I forget what those specific features are. I don't know if you know, Lacey. I'm not sure. No, he's. I, I see Kyle you're talking. You're on mute, but... Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's oh. talking on the phone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he's not talking to us. Who yeah, we? sorry about that. We're just we're, this, we're working a deal on a car, and this guy kept calling us. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah. So I don't. Do you know offhand what the extra little features that the Solterra gets that it's not on the BZ4? I haven't looked into it at all. Oh, okay. I saw them mentioned somewhere the other day, but it's anyway, so they're are... as unimpressive as the BZ4X <laughs> in all the best ways for some people. Right, but it's probably I... nice on the road. Offer. I'm just saying because I'm a brand girl. I love Subaru, so I would yeah. go for that. And um, they always have dogs at the auto show. I was so going to say that. Hell yeah. The dogs at the auto <laughs> the show dogs. make the Subaru better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like our family had a, a Subaru, like a 78, I think, Subaru the wagon. that I, I love that thing. It was like so good. It would climb anything. In, uh, it was just it was like a tiny little wood box running on the highway. <laughs> it felt like death was around every corner. <laughs> Honestly, like my friends that that aren't ready to go EV, I just always I recommend Subaru. I just love. I've had a Subaru. I I just they're such simple, good machines. They hold their value like crazy. That's like the main thing. Yeah. So, I mean, you're just so probably sick of them, Kyle, because you see them everywhere in Colorado. But I don't even notice them anymore because they're <laughs> literally everywhere. The sea of Subaru when you look out. So, so also in the news, I wanted to mention this before we end that the uh, Volkswagen might be building the ID Buzz in in the U.S. And they also let me just turn this off. They also uh, shared one of the head designers of the of the. Uh, Volkswagen Group shared a rendering of the Volkswagen pickup truck online the other day. And there it is right there. Uh, VW shows early rendering of ID Buzz pickup truck. And so they might, as well as the ID Buzz, they would possibly build this also in the US. I don't know if they should. Uh, Lacey, do you have, what, what is your opinion of this, looking at this? I mean is this something people would buy? I don't think it's the prettiest thing, but I think it's cool. Like it very gives me uh, the canoe vibes, the canoe pickup truck right, vibes. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm into that. I like it. If I can make it more usable, then yeah, game on. Yeah, I don't know, Kyle. See, this kind of puts me in mind of the uh, Hyundai Cruise in a way. You know, it's it's not like not a truck, but it's not a yeah, car. Santa Fe. 
Uh, Santa, no, the, Cruz. Santa Cruz. Like, it's like a, I don't know. What, oh, like yeah, Santa Cruz. Sorry, yeah. Car-based pickup. Yeah, I just reviewed it last day. week. Love it. One of the best things it's on sale looking. right now. Love okay. that thing. I and saw the first one on the road the other, yesterday. Yeah. They look so cool. Uh, I know. Some people hate them. Some people love them. Everyone I showed it to was like, that's really ugly. And I'm like, no, it's cool. <laughs> it, it didn't, I have to be honest. Uh, it didn't look as, as nice as I thought it would because I, I was kind of hyped on it. And then I saw it and I'm like – Maybe I need to spend a little bit more time looking at it because it was just kind of going by in traffic. I was like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, this like mm-hmm. the new design language of Hyundai is a little weird. Uh, by the way, here more important than this whole thing that's not going to happen anytime soon because we're not even going to get the, bu- the bus for a couple of years. Uh, right. MEB really needs a refresh, in my opinion. And they really need to up the voltage. They need to up the, the power. They need to up everything. They need software, hardware, make that thing optimized for now the mid 2020s right that that was designed back in uh 2017 18 19 when they were working on these chassis everyone is switching to 800 volt going forward ionic 5 ev6 gv60 are the benchmark no question meb needs a whole architectural mid-life cycle refresh double the voltage Massive charging speeds, big power, because uh, the cars drive great. They look great. They got the right image. I'm a huge Volkswagen MEB fan. I just think it's you know getting a little bit old at this point. Let's let's do a massive refresh, in my opinion. Be expensive, but I think it needs it. Yeah. Well, they are building another platform, right? They do have another like the successor well, to Volkswagen MEB coming. Group, yeah, and and then there's platforms within platforms for all the other brands as well. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah i mean it's they'd have to they have to really compete on price because it's hard to compete with like what hyundai motor group is doing with their with their charging speeds and it doesn't seem like it's hard to compete because id4 is still sold out waiting lists massive right i don't know if general buyers really understand the difference between charging speeds driving all of these things i think they just see an electric car most people and right. they go, okay, well, they just don't know. They, they don't even know to think about difference in charging speed. And so, you know, for us, we live in our little nerdy world. But I do think, do think for, for at least to please us, we need a little bit of a, little bit of a juice up on those things. Nathan, yeah. Green, uh, Nathan Green asks, didn't VW say an MEB refresh update is coming soon? I, can't I don't remember. know if they said it publicly, but they are working on it. But I'm just I saying. I, I thought to. I read about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So some, they're going to do something. And maybe not, I don't think they're going to go 800 volts. But. They're not going to cr- as crazy as I am suggesting they go. Right. But I know they're bringing their software development in-house. And so they, well, you know, they've that, been that for three years. Cariad's supposed to be the, you know, the overarching software development group. And, you know, it's been a disaster. This entire Volkswagen ID4 software update situation, total disaster. Sorry, but those cars were started on sale a year ago with the promise of over-the-air updates, with the promise of plug-in charge, with the promise of all of this stuff. We all bought into it. They all said it's coming. Guess what? Still not here. Oh, by the way, you actually have to take your cars to a dealer to flash on software there, and then they become over-the-air update compatible. It's just not good. Right. It, it, I, I just get so mad because it's like, okay, EA, where, why, how did this car not launch with plug-in charge? Like... <laughs> I don't think it was on EA. I think it's on Volkswagen. Right. I know, but I'm just saying, right. yeah, like, you, you mean Electrify America? Just you're to... in the same building. <laughs> like... Yep. But in Europe, they didn't have plug and charge at launch either. So it's more of a, a platform situation than it is with the charging companies. But it is hilarious that the Mach E is over a year faster to plug and charge. Not to say it worked great when it came out because it really didn't, um, but at least it was right. over a year faster. Than, uh, than ID4. And I remember the guys at EA, or maybe it was someone at Volkswagen. I, I actually don't remember who told me this, so no one sue me. But I remember they were like actually annoyed that Mercedes wanted to go plug in charge with the EQS. They're like, they keep pushing us on, on plug in charge. And they're like, it's a lot of work. I'm like, but it's needed. Yes, it's necessary. It's a luxury yeah. vehicle. Especially, yeah, That's especially like, with a luxury glass. I mean, every car is going to have to have plug-in charge at some point. You know, the sooner the better. You, you put yourself, you have that feature on your car. It's a, it's a selling point. You know, right now people just can't get cars, so everything's selling. But at some point, you know, it's, production is going to catch up with demand, and you, you're going to ha- have, you know, strong advantages over your competitors, and or, and or at least gonna... not have weaknesses. 
And people are going to start buying their second EVs and they're going to be like, okay, that's the thing I learned. I do not want that. And I know that that exists. So I'm going to go for this one instead because it's going to be the competitive advantage moving forward. Well, I think my dad's a good example of that, right? So he's, he's in the camp of owning EVs for a really long time, starting to really get into them, found out that the ID4s are not meeting his charging requirements, switched to an Ionic 5 and is the happiest guy on the planet. That's what I was going to buy. I was going to buy Ionic 5 before I got my Model Y. And I right. called around to so many dealers and they don't sell it in Michigan yet. So I was mm -hmm. like calling everyone in New York and New Jersey, all, like literally all over the country. And every single one of them was like, no, 10,000 over sticker. And I was following, oh, they had that it, tracker it online. I, I got the hookup for Ionic 5s. Uh, I wanted a specific one, one too, of course. I want a limited all wheel drive, yep. white on white. Um, oh, okay. Well, then when you get to color, the gray though. interior, I know, I know. So I was being very picky because I wasn't, I didn't get the exact thing I wanted the last time I was car shopping. And so I was like, I'm getting it this time, the one I want. And everyone was like 10 over sticker, 10 over sticker. And then they kept calling me, oh, I'm, I'm still trying to work on that. And I'm like, you know, no. And then we had to take the Model S in for service. Uh, we were getting the upgrade in the new computer. And the sales guy there was like, hey, I think I could, uh, there's a car in Chicago that I could reroute to you if you want, you know, th mm -hmm. this Model Y. And I was like, I really want the Ionic 5. And um, he was just like, I can literally get this car for you like, within the week. And I was like, well, if you can get it to me that fast and it's well, about the same price and it's going to hold its value. Yeah. You can that's why it for more. Well, know, and really. that's why I was getting this car because I was like, I'm, I'm, I have the pre-order on the R1T and it got the max pack option. So I that's see. delayed until they told us it's delayed until February of 2023, but I think it's going to get pushed again. I just don't see and I have the Ocean Coast interior for that too, the light yeah. interior. So it's like you need to have the Ocean Coast and the is, is that the, that they pushed back the Ocean Coast interiors yes, recently? Ball. Okay, right. which still it doesn't really affect me technically because I wasn't getting my car anyway till early 2023. But I think it's still gonna get pushed again. So I was like, I might as well have the Model Y in the meantime. We might at that point we don't know what we're gonna do yet, but we might at that point then sell the Model S and then you know have the Model Y and the R1T until then the Cybertruck comes. <laughs> Oh, you have, yeah, you have like an order kind of for a, a Cybertruck? Yeah, Tim has four orders for a Cybertruck. <laughs> Tim is I Mr. Know. Go Electric? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the situation is like the EV train that's like happening right now at my house. But, um, yeah, so till we get the R1T, which I think it's probably going to be more than what they're saying right now, February 2023, um, yeah. I wanted to get the Model Y, so... Right. That Rivian is still such a wonderful piece of machinery. Uh, I, I still haven't driven one. I saw Sandy brought his to the event and um, he let me sit in it and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, you come Colorado. drive it. We got our, our good friend Will lives right up the street and he wants everyone to drive his truck. So make a video with it. Well, Shaheen told me that he would get me one one time and I want to do like a whole big piece on it. So, okay. I mean, yeah. like, I, you know, my reviews, I like go excessive a little bit but i also want to do like some interviews and stuff but the the day will come i i definitely want to get it before i get mine um but yeah i i can't wait to drive it because i've just seen so many reviews and everyone's glowing over it and i just i want to glow with it <laughs> <laughs> right all right uh so we should probably get going soon but before we do uh, we should bookend the show where you started with the Citroen Ami and we should probably maybe end with it because with uh, with this bit of news that the Fiat Topolino may be resurrected as a rebranded Citroen Ami. So, so if first you off, get this... that spec is stellar. <laughs> so cute. So if you can't get the Citroen, you might be able to get it as a Fiat, maybe, possibly. So I heard they're coming to the U.S. Fiat? No, yeah, Fiat is, oh, Citroen. I mean, Fiat is here with one right, model. Right. They have literally the 500X, which you can get with a drop top, I think. 500 no, the 124 has gone out of production. Really? That's like my one, understanding. I, I, I was just I, talking to Jordan about this, and he said they don't they don't make the 124 anymore. I like the 124. I mean, I know, it's, it's a better Miata car, here. but it was the nicer Miata. Um, yeah. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So, okay. yeah, I, I heard there's like a rental only ride sharing thing for the Ami coming. And oh, I right. hope it goes the way of the Nissan branded uh, Twizzies right. that came in because there are legal Twizzies in this country from right. that program. And I really right. am, I've been dying to find a way to import one. 
Right. So, so there's a chance that you could possibly get one of these. Uh, I have like from all a of these program. search filters to ding and blow up my <laughs> yeah. phone as soon as a Twizy comes up for sale in the U.S. Because you can't import it. It's technically a car. You can't import it till it's 25 years old. So I was like, how do we get out of spec registered as a, you know, manufacturer in Colorado? And then we can put manufacturer plates on it for reverse engineering and then just swap it out every year with a different one. No, Noah in the chat says Fiat is no longer in us. This is true. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Fiat. <laughs> so just the really weird 500 X thing. All right. So we should probably end the show. We've yep, done our thing. Uh, so Join us again next week. We'll, we'll hear about the Lexus RZ 450E and see if uh, Tom thinks that's an improvement over the BZ4X. Um, but so if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread or on our YouTube or Twitch comment sections. If you like the show, please give us a thumbs up if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, don't forget you can find and follow our panelists on Twitter. Follow Martin Lee at EV News Daily. Kyle Connor is at It's Kyle Connor. Lacey is at Miss Go Electric. And sub subscribe to her YouTube channel because it's awesome. And I'm at Dominic underscore Y. Click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. And we'll see you all again next week. Ciao.